Welcome everyone to the Moreno Valley Writers Expo 2020. We're so glad that you can join us to support local authors and to celebrate the art of writing. As a reminder, please make sure that your microphones are muted and that your videos are turned off to minimize distractions for the presenter. If you have any questions for our presenter, please type them in the chat box and we will pass them on to her. If you need any tech help, you can ask me, Charmaine Mendez from the Moreno Valley Public Library. I will do my best to assist you. Now, I am happy to introduce our guest speaker for this session. Anna Christian is an author, writer consultant, educator, independent historian, and a member of the Riverside Renaissance Writers. She has written fiction, poems, book reviews and essays, short stories, two one-act plays and a children's play, The Big Table, which was produced at Francis Williams Corner Theater and is now a picture book for ages six to eight, published by Data Light uh, Pro Productions. She is also the author of Meet It, Greet It, and Defeat It, the biography of Francis E. Williams, uh, adult contemporary novels, Daniel's Wife, and Then Sings My Soul, and the Bobby and Sonny mystery series for preteens. Uh, she is also the CEO of DDLT Productions, which provides editing, proofreading, book reviews, and conducts writing workshops. Welcome, Anna. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Charmaine. And I want to thank you and, and your crew uh, for, you know, for, for this author expo. I think it's wonderful to, you know, that will allow local authors uh, to come and share their work. As well, you know, so anyway, I want to start off with um, it's called Inside the Writer's Craft. And so I thought I'd start off with uh, just a few pages from Daniel's Wife, which was one of my books and my contemporary adult book. And it uh, just a little bit background about Jessica is that Jessica was married. Her husband was Daniel, Je Daniel Weaver and Jessica Weaver. And they were married for a number of years. And then suddenly he went away on a business trip and he didn't return. So um, that's pretty much what the story, and she becomes, you know, she, what she does is that, uh, it's a story about a woman going through a journey and, and gaining her independence. Anyway, this is an excerpt when she's, she and Daniel have been living together for a while. They're not married. <laughs> Uh, Daniel had, had six months into his course had turned into a year. So one afternoon he called her from work. Baby, I'm taking you out tonight for something special. I want you to get your best dress on and we're dining at the Mont Blanc restaurant. The Mont Blanc restaurant was a small expensive restaurant that served French cuisine and played cool jazz music. Designed to evoke the feeling of being in Paris, the walls were painted with murals, scenes of well-known landmarks, the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, the Moulin Rouge, and an outside cafe in Montmartre. She, pa she passed the place whenever she was downtown, but had never even given it a second thought of the idea of going inside for dinner. The places she and Daniel went to eat were on a much more modest scale like Denny's and Coco's. She started to protest that it was way beyond their budget. You let me worry about that, he said. Jesse spent all day getting ready, trying on one dress after another and finally deciding on a red two-piece suit she had only worn once to a party with Daniel. He, uh, he told her to meet him in front of the restaurant as he had, worked late. he had to work late and wouldn't have time to come home to get her. He had made the reservations for 7.30. It took her 40 minutes to get downtown to the restaurant on the bus. However, she managed to make it with 10 minutes to spare. Daniel was waiting for her in front. Nervous with anticipation, she said little as she followed him into the restaurant and over to a booth in, the dark, in a dark corner. After dinner, he ordered a bottle of champagne. Then he reached into his breast pocket of his jacket and pulled out a small black box. When you go to work tomorrow, I want to give you. I want you to give your notice. I'm the breadwinner in the family, and I don't want my wife to work. Wife, she drew in a quick breath. Did she hear right? They were having. They were. They had been living together for almost two years. In all this time of being together, he had said nothing about marriage, though the thought of marriage to Daniel had been constantly on her mind ever since she'd met him. She met, but she never voiced her desire. 
Getting down on one knee, he opened the box, pulled out a small diamond ring and placed it on her fingers. I love you, he said, and I want you to be my wife. He recalled the conversation he had had with his boss over a week ago. Mr. Gregory had called him into his office. Daniel, you've got a bright future with this company. And since you've been with us, sales have increased. You've done a great job. Daniel smiled modestly. Thank you, sir. His chest swelled with pride. His mind raced ahead. Mr. Re Mr. Gregory is going to give him a raise or even a promotion, he was almost sure. There is one problem that may impede your progress up the ladder. You're single, am I right? Mr. Gregory said, gazing directly into Daniel's eyes. Uh, yes, I am. Well, let me be direct. You need a wife. Our customers don't trust a single man as much as they do a married one. An unmarried man is not as stable, not saying that you aren't. It's just that it looks good for the company and it'll do, do your career good. Marriage, Daniel thought as he made his way back to his desk. It sounded so final, like a death sentence. It took him a week to decide. Okay, <laughs> that, was, that was just an over, just one little section of the book that, uh, that I wrote called Daniel's Wife. And what I'm gonna talk about today is inside the writer's craft and it's kind of an overview. So it's not really going into much detail, but just talking about what a writer, you know, if you wanna be a writer and that's what, you know, writers write. So uh, one of the things you wanna do is to, uh, to write, and here's just an overview. Let's see if I can get this, this thing going. Oh my goodness. I can't, uh, oh, there we go, oh, sorry. So first thing is that where do your ideas come from? You know, you're, you wanna be a writer or you are a writer and where do you get your ideas? Writers come from real life events, you know, real life events, stories come from real life events, maybe people you know or have met, uh, descriptions of places you visited. Uh, like, for example, Daniel's wife, I, I used to live in Oregon, and, uh, and I wrote this when I lived in Oregon, and some of it is based on a uh, description of the place that places where I lived and some of the people that I've met, but it's not real life, but, you know, writers take from different things that happen in their lives. Uh, dialogues are things you've heard and stories. Maybe I, I think at one time I sat outside at a, a restaurant and I, to, I picked up, I was listening because you, know, you always have to be observant as well as to listen because when you're doing dialogue, you have to pick up the cadence of, of different people. And so when you're writing about someone from Boston, you have a certain accent. When you're writing about someone from the South, you have a certain accent. And so as a writer, you've got to interpret it that way so that your, your readers can believe it. And sometimes you you know, you, you, if you're lucky to have a grandmother or, or a grandfather or aunt or uncle, somebody that tells great stories, they may have told you a story. And so you get your ideas from some of the stories, you know, you don't take it word for word, but you can take it and make it your own. And of course, journals. Uh, a few months back, I did a journal writing, a tool for writers, in which I showed how using your journals, if you write journals, you can pick up all kinds of ideas uh, from your journals to create, to make into stories. Okay, let me see if I can get the next slide going. Okay, there we go. All right, now there's so many types of writings. There are biographies, autobiographies and memoirs, and just back up just a, just a little bit, a biography is a story written by someone else about someone else. You know, for example, um, when, when I talk about meet it, greeted and defeated, it was a biography that I wrote about a woman that I knew up in LA. And autobiography, emphasis on auto, means that it's self, that you write it yourself. And a memoir, a memoir is, is it's a, it's a, maybe a particular incident or uh, something in your life that stands out. It's not your whole life story, but it's something that stands out. And of course, there's essays, there are reviews, and I write, uh, I write book reviews for Goodreads, and I'll show you at the end. Goodreads, it's a good way to learn how to write book reviews as well as if you'd like to read, which you all, you know, it's really important. Uh, you can write book reviews for uh for good reason, it's good practice. Profiles, you can write profiles of people. Um, I also write, uh, occasionally I write uh, our profiles of people for blackpass.org 
on that's online and it's a it, I've, I've written several profiles of people uh that are, that's posted on uh black past and of course the journal fiction there is novels short stories and poems and all of those are things that that uh if you like to write or if you haven't started to write you want to think about well what type of writing what do i want to do i started off writing poems and then i went from there to short stories and then i, I eventually moved into novels now, just want to give you some of the basic ingredients of, of anatomy of a novel. Because I study novels and uh, I study whatever I read, I study to see their techniques and so forth. Anyway, some of the basic ingredients of a novel is you have to have characters. Anything you write, whether a children's story or a play or a script, script, script writing, a screenplay or whatever, you have to have characters. And usually it's like you have a protagonist, these are literary terms, protagonist and an antagonist. Protagon, protagonist would be uh, just simplified the, the, the good guy, not necessarily the good guy, but he's the person that, that kind of drives the story. And the protagonist is someone who um, uh, it has a goal and, and has a goal that, that he or she wants to reach. The antagonist is the thing that stops that character from reaching his or her goal. So that uh, you, uh, as mentioned earlier, I think, and James did an excellent presentation, uh, it creates a conflict between the protagonist or the main character wanting to get to a particular goal and the antagonist who's blocking it. And it can be an internal conflict person has an internal problem that can't quite reach that particular goal. It's stopping me from doing it. And there's an external problem. External conflict means there's there's a conflict with uh, either the another person that's stopping you. The antagonist could be uh, society might be stopping you from getting to your goal, or it can be nature. And like we have the COVID out today, and that would be an external antagonist. Or we have hurricanes and we have fires. All of those are antagonists antagonistic because they will keep your your uh, you from or the main character from reaching his or her goal there's also narration and narration is you that's a part of the body of a, a ingredient within a novel or a short story and that's the, the the bottom line is you show don't tell but narration serves a certain purpose a really important purpose in in your novel writing then we have um, the setting and a setting is really important because remember that you want your readers to 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 believe what you're writing about. So your setting has to be, uh, uh, it has to be something that uh, that that makes your character see and feel. And so you have a setting, you have a time, and you have uh, the place. So it's place and time, and it has to be authentic, and or otherwise your readers are not going to going to believe what you're talking about or not been, what they're reading. And of course, description, and there's all kinds of descriptions. There is the uh, the outside physical description of the character, but there's also the internal, there's a psychological description, and all of those things mesh are a part of a part of a novel. And of course, the dialogue. And if you're writing a novel, you want to have dialogue in it, a short story. Uh, if you're writing a play, of course, that's made up mostly of, di of dialogue as well as a screenplay. It's mostly dialogue. And so that's where the, as I said, you have to listen and he have an ear for dialogue so you can, uh, uh, your readers can, can believe what is, what is going on, you know, what's, what the person is saying. And you can convey so many things through dialogue. Now, the resolution is the, remember, you go back and you have the protagonist versus the, the antagonist, that's a conflict. And the conflict, how that conflict is resolved leads to your resolution. That's your, that's, that's how, how does it come, how does it come out? Does your protagonist end up on top or does your, uh, does your antagonist, do they, does the antagonist defeat the protagonist? And that, so all of that's a part of your resolution to the story. And it has to be a believable. You can't just pull out like they used to have something where you could just, uh, someone would come in and solve the solve the situation. So it has and 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 it, and sometimes it becomes really phony because it's not a real resolution. It doesn't go along with everything else that's in your novel. So you have to pay attention to your resolution. That has to come from everything else that is within your within your uh, within your story. And the theme is your takeaway. Is there something that you want your readers to take away 
they used to be a really simple theme like good versus evil. So you knew that if you were reading a novel where you had a good guy and a bad guy, you knew, and the, the theme would be, I want the good guy to win. So that means everything is pointing to uh, that theme. So when your readers are finished, uh, th they'll say, ah, crime doesn't pay. Oh, let me put that. Yeah, they say crime doesn't pay and or, or uh, uh, that, that jealousy doesn't win out. And so all of those are some of the themes that greed always end in, in, uh, in disaster. Uh, all of those are some, some ideas about themes. So those are some things that you might think about when you're writing your novel. Uh, okay, and I'm, I'm just showing you some of the novels I've written in different genres. As I said, I have written a biography, Meet It, Greet It, and Defeated, which is the biography of Frances E. Williams, actress, activist. And that's how I got started is because I was in her workshop and Frances knew so many important people. And one day I asked her if I can come up and write a biography. She'd been trying to write an autobiography for years, but finally she said she was too busy living that she didn't have time to write a biography. So I wrote her, I wrote, I worked with her on her biography and I learned so many, many amazing things. But writing a biography is, can be very difficult because you have to do research. And I had to do a lot of research and you have to be uh, uh, honest and in, you know, when you write it and so forth. So all of those things were really important. Uh, I wrote uh, Daniel's Wife, that was the one I just read. And, I re and then I wrote, uh, Then Sings My Soul. And that, that's a story of four uh, women. You have a mother and she's raising her two children and her two teenage daughters. And then she also has a, uh, her, her, grand, her mother who she doesn't get along with has a stroke and has to come to live with her. So that would be the setup. But then the conflict is when her husband asks her to, uh, if he could use her, her ex-husband, if he could use her house as a mail drop. So that's a mystery. I like mysteries. Uh, I wrote uh, three Bobby and Sunny Mysteries, you know, on the line of, of the, the Drew, uh, what is it, uh, Nancy Drew or the Hardy Boys, I, you know, because I like mysteries, as I said. So the first one was Mrs. Griffin is Missing. The second one is, is The Newcomer. And then I wanted to add a, a young girl in there because I realized that uh, I think girls read more than boys sometimes. So I, so the, the uh, Mrs. Moore, Miss, Mr. Moore's Menagerie is where you have, it's not just Bobby, Sunny, and Max. And Max is the girl. She's been added to the series. And the picture book is a, uh, a picture book that I wrote that at first it was a short story that I wrote in Francis's class. And then I turned it into, she turned it into a play and it was presented at her theater. And finally, I made it into a picture book, and and uh, and and so that's what I have. It's a hardback. Here's my contact information. If anybody's interested, I do have two websites. I have a, my website Anna Christian, as well as Francis Place, in which I'm featuring Francis Williams. So if you go on Francis Place, you'll find a body of information. Uh, and also, my my books are available on Amazon, as well as the African American Library Book. Uh, uh, association and so forth. So anyway, um, I, I write a blog, as I said, and so if you go on Anna, Anna Doodling blog, uh, blog spot, and you, uh, um, among my blogs, you'll see studying other writers and essay part one. I have two, two parts, but that's um, one that if you read that, you'll get an idea as to what I look at when I'm looking, when I'm, when I'm writing, when I'm looking at how, how writers write. And, and um, the, the important thing about it is to read and read in all genres, read all kinds of, you know, all types of books. And that will give you a sense, if you want to be a novelist or you want to be a writer, you've got to read other things by other people, maybe different genres as well. And I do have a part two, but I haven't, I haven't put that on my blog yet. And as I said, I do write book reviews for Goodreads, but I also, you know, if you like to read and you want to look for a good book, you might look on Goodreads and you might find, and if you find, look for Anna Christian, you'll find that Anna Christian has several books up there too. Are there any questions? I'm done for, uh, for um, that's, my, that's my overview. Does anybody have any questions? Yes, I have one. Yes. Do you have a writing routine? Do you have a set time, a place, a location oh. that you write? Oh, Mona. Yeah, um, I, uh, I do have, it's my bedroom. <laughs> it's my bedroom. Uh, I usually, um, maybe I write late at night. I don't write consistently as much as I should, but I do write at night. And sometimes I write during the day. So it just depends on what's on TV. 
you know, I might write, but, but I know they say writers, I think Walter Mosley says he writes like five o'clock, he writes five hours a day. Some people write a, a, just maybe an hour. Some people write a certain number of, of lines. So wherever you're comfortable writing, you, you develop your own routine. And if you stick to that routine and you don't, you know, vary it or you don't stop, you know, something will come out of it. I've also heard that some writers go away ah, to yes. a hotel or a resort right. so that they can focus. Yeah. Have you and, tried that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Whenever I have, have an opportunity, if I go away by myself, I will take my laptop with me and I will write. And this time, this, I went up to, um, uh, not Big Bear, uh, uh, but I went up there and, you know, I had a cabin for, for a week. And every morning I got up and I wrote. And I also went out to Oceanside. I have a timeshare. And I went out to Oceanside and, and, and I wrote. And that's where I do my, I really, really concentrate on my writing so that you're not bothered by, distracted by other things outside of yourself. So it's a good thing to have, uh, to do. I have a, uh, hello, this is uh, James, James. Hi, James. There's, I have a, I, hey, I had just a comment. I, I love, um, I love your writing. But I also, I also like your voice. You should really do some Ooh, some voiceover. <laughs> but um, thank you for uh, for for Daniel's wife. One yes. of the reasons why I like that passage because it led you down um, a very down, lovely, rosy, uh, beautiful thing that he was about to propose to yeah. someone he had been with for two years. Yeah. But then, as the story goes on, you find out that there may have been ulterior motive. So right. all those emotions that you felt going into it, yes. it, it wasn't real. So obviously now you have to realize those aren't real emotions. So I can't have those real emotions for him and for her because he really was doing it for an alternative purpose. And I thought that was a great little twist oh, when you, you. Um, placed that in. So thank you for that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I tried to do that in, you know, in terms of, I think there used to be writing where you're just going straight through and, you know, no subtlety. But it's the subtlety that I like. It's the it's the uh, thing that the switch that I like. That's why I like the suspense. You know, it's and you, you think you're going one way, and all of a sudden you're going in a totally different way. And I really like that. Hey Anna, this this, this is Raymond. Hi Raymond. <laughs> I have a question. Yes. I'm not sure why I'm here, but, but how long have you been writing? And oh, when did God. you realize that you were a writer? Oh, God, I, I wrote for a long time. You know, I, well, we're going back, uh, telling my age, we were, I was really a long time. I, you know, I wasn't in baby shoes or anything like that, though, but I have been writing a long time. And I'd written a lot, but I hadn't really sent, I'd, I'd sent out, I'd taken classes, I'd sent out and got rejection, rejection, rejection. And you will, if you're trying to get a traditional publisher, you will get rejected. But as they say, I think one, one, one writer said that you get enough so that you can paper your wall with those rejections. Uh, but what happened with me is that, uh, is that I eventually turned to uh, being an independent publisher because I felt like I could get my stuff out faster if I'm an independent publisher. And so that's what I started doing is, is uh, building my business as an independent publisher. And uh, my, my weak side is that I'm not very good at marketing. So I, you know, if I wanna expand my business, I guess I need a publicist and a marketer or something. But yeah, I've been writing a long time and uh, that's why I've gone into so many different genres. Thank you so much, Anna. Um, we're actually out of time, but if any, you have any other questions for Anna, I put her email in the chat, Anna Doolin at yahoo.com. Uh, so feel free to um, ask her any questions through there. Thanks everyone. Uh, and I thank you all Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, please close us out. Sure. Thank you, Anna. You always do a wonderful job. Thank you. Um, <laughs> thank you, Anna. So, thank you. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> so thanks to everyone that participated for our audience. Uh, our next guest speaker is at 2.30, and that's uh, Dratana Maddox. So we hope you can join us for that. Thanks again, everyone. And everyone have a wonderful, safe day. Thank you, everybody. And I'll 